This is uh, uh, Nico. Uh, nice to see you. I just want you to know it's been a long time with everything that's happened on your side. Congratulations on being elected to the ATP Council. Wow, that is fantastic. I mean, for a young guy to represent all the old players, that's fantastic. <laughs> Look, uh, I, this is uh, this issue of on court is all about the Davis Cup. Canada winning the Davis Cup, of course, was a big, big thing. But uh, unfortunately for Canada, uh, tennis is not what it's like in South America and Europe and so forth. So we got very little media traction. But uh, the trophies going across in, uh, the country. And what I did was uh, I went back and I interviewed 40 of the players that are still alive out of the 75 that represented our country. And uh, I asked them three basic questions, which I'm going to ask to you before I ask you a final question. The first question was, when you grew up in Venezuela, or Uruguay for that matter, what did you think of Davis Cup? What was it for you? Well, it, it was my first big impression of tennis, you know, representing your country. And uh, I was very young when I saw the first one, when I was seven, seven years old and I remember it clicked on me that tennis was an individual sport and that, that representing your country in a, in a team competition was always going to be something special. So it always was, as, as you well know. So I lived it to the fullest uh, and my, my best results always came around either before or after a Davis Cup tie because I, I always wanted to be prepared at my best to, to compete for my country and for my teammates. So it was really an inspiration, and, and it's, it was uh, uh, what I played for throughout the year. Of course, the big tournaments were, were very important, and tennis being an individual um, uh, sport, it, it's, it's, it's always about that 95% of the time, but it was always a special time around Davis Cup, no doubt. Yeah, I think uh, that seems to be pretty much a uh, consensus. Uh, mine, uh, so that you know, I was 10 years old, and I finished telling, uh, doing the rosary with my grandmother. And she let me watch the black and white TV. And I saw uh, a guy, Paul Willie, from uh, in Victoria, B.C., beat Barry McKay. And he hit something like 25 aces. And that stayed with me forever. And that was a start. That's where my dreams turned. Second, I mean, you must have had numerous, numerous experiences. Tell me a couple of them that really stick out for you from when you played Davis Cup. Ah, uh, well, I'm going to tell you the first one, which is a win, which is going to sting, but winning that deciding uh, singles rubber in uh, Jerry Park uh, against uh, good old Seb Loro, I think was a big one uh, because we were playing away. Canada had a very solid team with with uh, Seb and Daniel Nestor and Grant Connell, so so that was that was a tough one, uh, and it was a great one. So that was a great memory, especially because I I got to kick some Canadian ass uh, <laughs> over there with my good friend Louis Caillé um, on the uh, on the chair. So that that was a good one. That was special because you and I were. were in a very close relationship uh, back then and as we always were but we, we were seeing a lot of each other so that was cool and then i have to go to the most painful one which was uh against uh, denmark we were up 2-1 going into the sunday i had to play the first uh, match sunday morning and i couldn't sleep all night you know with a bad stomach food poisoning i guess part of it was because of the nerves so, I, you know, I was thinking about not even going into the match. I lost the first two sets, came back, won the third against Kenneth Carlson and then had a couple of set points to take it to a fifth and deciding set. Ended up losing that match in, in, in four sets. And I remember how disappointed I was. We ended up losing the, the tie and, and the opportunity to move to the world group for the for the first time. And, and, and that was the match, I believe, right after the, the Canada uh, win and we had been on a tear you know we had won four ties in a row um and uh, that was that was really a, a low point i was back in 1995 but you know there were there were so many 
uh, opportunity to to represent the country, play with different teammates. Unfortunately, my career was not that long, so I could not play that much. But um, I remember those two vividly. Uh, and unfortunately, as tennis players, and you you well know this, it's that you you remember the tough losses a lot more than you do the big wins. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the nature of the sport. One winner per week, usually. You know. <laughs> And all the rest are losers. Uh, tell me, Canada winning the Davis Cup. I mean, you know, uh, we've known each other. You know how, what it meant to me. And it was such a dream and everything. What do you think about Canada winning the Davis Cup? What, oh, it was great. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm such a big fan of Canadian tennis. I almost went to play for Canada. Ah, uh, um, that was going to be my last question. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Uh, you know, Milos had bad luck with the injuries. Hopefully, he can you know recover and in time to to make it to make a last go at his career, his great career. Um, but those two guys, uh, you know, growing up together, of course, they're so young. They, they don't even I don't think they realize what it means for for a tennis loving nation like you guys and uh, how much you put into it. The tradition that can that Canada has. In tennis, you know the the great results you've had not only on on the men's side but on the women's as well. So it, it's unfortunate the format change and and the and the cup lost a bit of its luster in in some way. Hopefully, it'll get back to her former glory in in years to come. But a win is a win, and in the record books, it's Canada, and I love it. You know, I, I'm a big fan of of Felix. Uh, and, and Chapo, ever since you told me to go watch them when they were 16 and 15, uh, they're at Wimbledon one year playing the juniors. Um, so I've been following their career and to see them get to the pinnacle of, of the sport in terms of a Davis Cup win is, is just very fulfilling for me. You know, I'm, I'm very, very glad for you because I know how, how hard uh, the whole Tennis Canada um, family has, has fought for this. So I'm, I'm extremely happy and uh I don't know. You drink out of the Stanley Cup, but the Davis Cup is a little bigger. So <laughs> you're going to get your fill out of that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you know what? We have to talk because very few people know about this. But tell me, you were almost part of the Davis Cup Canadian tradition. So, like, you know, just what do you remember of it? And especially, how, what do you remember of your decision not to, not to play for Canada? It's it's tough, you know, because as it ends up, I became an immigrant again when I when I came to America. But I think at eighteen, I was still struggling with uh, the fact that I was an immigrant in Venezuela, representing Venezuela. I had to play against Uruguay maybe a year prior to that, and it didn't feel any good. And I had it fresh in my heart, so I felt that playing for Canada against Venezuela, a country that gave me so much, that helped me. As the jump start my my tennis career and gave me all the elements I, I needed to to make it to the pros. I don't think it would have been fair for for Venezuela, and I don't think I would have been able to do it wholeheartedly. So I've I've always tried to go for that wholehearted feeling in everything I do in life. So looking back at it and knowing me uh, the way that I do at fifty two. I think I made the right decision. I don't tend to regret any decisions I made in the past because I made them with, with you know, the facts that I had in my hand at the time. But I think it was the right decision. Do, do, do I think it could have gone uh, different? Definitely. Definitely. I would have gotten to spend much more time with you and, and, and your family. Uh, and I think it would have been great either way. But in my heart, I just don't think I could have played against Venezuela. Um, if I would have moved on. Well, for our listeners, uh, I've got a little different take about it. I mean, uh, Nico and I were very good friends. <laughs> and uh, his mom was very influential in arranging the possibility for him to come to Canada. And besides the fact that uh, he was a very close friend and uh, that my son, he's my son's godfather, uh, Walker, who's a tennis coach, uh, the fact of having him, I just thought was the most brilliant thing because Canada had lost so many matches playing in South America. And I just could not wait to go into South America with some good looking stud 
who could just handle all of the South Americans. But he came to Canada and trained with us for a couple of weeks. And one morning he got up, he says, it's too cold here. I've got to go back down. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to blame it on the cold weather, huh? <laughs> and you know what? I just came back from the Dominican to spend a week here. And now I understand completely. <laughs> Nico, thank you. I, I love you. I love you guys up there, the whole tennis community. You've given me nothing but love through the years. Every time you win, a piece of me, a piece of me wins, uh, be it man uh, or woman. And I'm so happy you guys uh, finally brought the cup home. But uh, nothing but love for you guys. And congratulations on becoming a grandfather there, old man. All right. Good for you. Thank you so much. I'm, you know, I'm very blessed. Uh, uh, this life that I've had is, you know, because of tennis has been fantastic. People like you, your family, uh, your mom, you know, just make sure you give her my love. Thank you, Nico. You look great. Okay. You take care, man. Have a good one. Hope to see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.